Hi, today I'm going to be talking about YouTube as a teaching and assessment platform. During my placement this semester, I had the pleasure of working with some students studying environmental science and sustainability, and for their um, classwork, I was able to work with them to start to create a um, video series. Um, and I'd like to talk a bit about how that was useful for them and how that challenged their thinking about environmental science and sustainability and also um, how that panned out as an assessment tool. So the task itself, um, it was a video task um, presented to the students um, via video. I made my own PowerPoint recorded video for them to watch um, and their aim was to create a video themselves that were one to two minutes in length and it was designed to teach peers about a topic within energy production. Um, the goal for them was to collectively contribute to a YouTube channel um, to create a peer created learning resource and revision resource for exam periods um, and later revision. Um, so the video itself, when I worked with the teacher, she decided that she would like the videos to um, be focused on energy production and um, different methods of energy productions, um, production to um, to to get the students thinking about um, what that means in terms of the environment, sustainability, um, and the global community. Um, and the video itself, the requirements I set out for the students were that it needed to be engaging, concise, relevant, and understandable. Um, and this was given in a series of dot points and it was explicitly stated what kind of content they needed to be producing um, through this. Um, they needed to include some form of visual stimulus in their videos in addition to um, speech and in addition to um, uh, dot points. So more than just a PowerPoint that's been spoken over and recorded, more than just an oral presentation. Um, so I gave them options with diagrams, pictures, data, drawings, videos um, that they had created. Um, they had options to work in a movie maker um, and they had options to do a variety of different things that allowed them to be a bit creative about how to get the content that they were trying to get across and make it engaging for the audience, which for them was their peers. Um, the task itself was designed to develop students' presenting skills, um, not only in terms of oral presenting skills, but um, presentation of science in a new media um, rather than just papers and um, oral presentations and lectures and that kind of thing um, and it gives them an opportunity to communicate that information as a teacher and step into that teacher role because there is a large focus within the um, ACT schooling um, ESS curriculum on uh, communication of science and scientific topics um, communication about environment and climate change to do with um, um, and, and what that means to, to them and how to communicate those pieces of information to a broad audience. Um, yeah, so I was trying to address all those kinds of things within the task. Um, the task itself, unfortunately, um, we didn't have very much time to do the task within the class. Um, they were given two lessons. Their lessons are one hour long each um, and they had the option to come in at lunch times if they wished but um, considering that it was um, yeah considering that it was three weeks before major assignments were due and four weeks before um, ex 
exam period um, for the for the school. Um, there wasn't a lot of extra time that students had up their sleeve to really work on this from a critical perspective. Um, so they had just two straight lessons to read up on the topics that they were presenting um, and review them, design the video, make the video, edit the video and upload it to YouTube. Um, I introduced the topic with my own YouTube video and then gave them some different YouTube creators such as Minute Physics, Nat Geo, ACP Science as some different representations visually and orally of how this kind of information can be presented and to kind of get them thinking about what they wanted to do. Um, I left the students to do their own research in pairs or groups of three um, and then kind of make a plan. I got them to, um, I gave them time to walk, work on it on their own but checked in on them and saw how they were going and gave them individual feedback. I didn't require them to do a storyboard or a script straight up but um, or, you know, a, a pre-planned sketch of what they were going to be putting in if they were doing drawings or cartoon style, um, minute physics style drawings. But um, I did go around and give them suggestions on how to kind of further solidify their plan, I guess. Um, so some students I gave, um, I told to, to work on creating a script because they weren't certain of how to convey the information and other students, they knew what they were trying to talk about but they was kind of stuck for visual help, um, for visual uh, representations of what they were trying to talk about. Um, so I kind of, yeah, I made it a bit more individual um, and the task was pretty flexible but given the amount of time that they had. Um, for the students, Positives for the students were um, that they they took really well to to learning to navigate video cre creation and they were really engaged in the task. They were really interested in um, how to represent this information and how to communicate this information on this kind of platform. Um, I felt like the task being um, set as a YouTube video creation task made it a lot more relevant for them um, than, for example, a slow motion project might have been. Um, so they that got them very excited about it. And I think, um, yeah, because they had that option of um, putting it up and the, and the focus as well of putting it up on a platform and it was going to be communicated to their peers and it was going to be communicated also to the outside world. Um, so yeah, I think giving students a bit of a pedestal to, to stand up and profess from was quite, um, alluring to them, I guess. Um, and they, they had a broad range of, um, ideas. Each, each of the groups had broad, broad ranges of ideas of how they wanted to represent their, um, information. Some of the students were really interested in the video side of it, the, the visual side of it, and they were pretty keen on working on drawings or acting out a play. I had one group of students who did like a little skit um, on nuclear power and they, they had like a set of um, positives and negatives on each side of the board and they made it about how, um, well, I'm going to demonstrate the positives and I'm going to counter with the negatives and like a bit of a debate. Um, and then they turned the question around and asked the, the class, um, visually, you know, well, what is your opinion? Is it a negative or a positive thing for the environment, for society, for economics, for different um, countries? So that was a fascinating approach to take with it. Um, although they didn't really go into depth in terms of what nuclear power is and how it works. So they focused on the end results rather than the process. Um, the scientific process by which it happens. Um, and then whereas I had other students who were much more engaged in the um, representing scientific fact correctly or scientific theory correctly um, and representing those kind of processes in a way that was um, meaningful to, to the layman. Um, so they didn't work so much on the visual representation and the engaging 
um, and engaging their audience in terms of um, uh, comedy or 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 um, questioning, but they were they were trying to take an informing approach to to the the task. Um, the project was designed to um, get students to consider the positives and negatives of each method of energy production. Um, and I also had, um, so they did research on that, but I also found that in a couple of the videos, students would um, start to give their own opinions of whether that was good or bad. Like, you know, they would represent, you know, these are positives and these are negatives, but is that overall good or bad? Um, and, you know, making those kinds of decisions. And that was interesting to see that that had an influence on students' opinions of different energy production methods. Um, it did, the task itself um, did influence students to consider economics and social influences that contribute to decisions um, in energy production use, like to, like what, what a government should choose to do um, in terms of supplying energy for their country. Um, and that was fascinating to see um, students starting to develop that kind of thinking of, you know, what is my opinion in this situation? Um, and then also the students got to collectively contribute to that learning resource. Um, unfortunately, I tried to get in contact with the school afterwards to see whether um, students had accessed the videos afterwards um, and whether they had found them useful later on or whether they continued to use the YouTube channel as a tool in their class. Um, but I didn't get any comment back. I have looked at the YouTube channel since and there have been a few views of the videos. So students have gone on there and watched the video after it's been uploaded by their peers. Um, and I checked when we were doing our work and back in, I was, I was doing this placement back in, um, in July and August and once they uploaded there was maybe three or four views um, of the videos and since then there's been 10 or 12 or 14 views of the videos um, up to now. Um, whether that's students within the class or whether that's random YouTube users, I don't know. So it's hard to say whether that has a, a long-term positive effect for that class as a learning resource. Um, so some challenges that the students had. Um, yes, challenges that the students had. Initially, a lot of the students were stuck on how to work in a video format. Um, they'd been like they've had lots of training in terms of how to work on oral presentations before and so that they weren't too stressed out about but um, they didn't really know how to make a video engaging and also they didn't know how to work on the technical side of making a video um, so we, I did work with some groups who were struggling on how to use things like iMovie, how to edit, how to, um, how to create a PowerPoint presentation that's, um, that has uh, the recording attached to it and how to include videos in that and that kind of thing so that they had those kinds of skills. And that did take up some time and I think it also took up some of their planning time. So in the future, I'd probably consider that as a component, um, you know, that they might need that time learning how to use the media before they can launch into creating something that really accurately represents their understanding of a subject and their understanding of how to communicate that subject. Um, so more time essentially to how to present the information would have been benefit, like would have benefited the students, especially when they were making arguments for or against a t particular energy production type. Um, I found in one of the videos that um, was uploaded, um, the one on solar energy, yeah, um, a form of solar energy, that one, 
the students didn't really um, formulate an argument of why it should or should not be used. They kind of, they listed facts about what is good about it and what is bad about it, but they didn't then argue for or against afterwards with those facts. Um, and then I did have one student group who just made a PowerPoint. Um, they didn't include any images. They didn't uh, include any videos, they didn't include any drawings, um, they just made an annotated PowerPoint that was recorded. Um, so I think for them, I don't know whether that was a case of that they weren't as interested in the task as the other students or whether they needed more time. So I think definitely for this task, time is a thing, but also perhaps, um, yeah, a, a little bit more stringent regulations on the assessment task would have forced them to um, extend themselves a bit more. Um, in terms of using this mm, this media and YouTube video creation as a tool for assessment, I think I think it's um, it's definitely a task that can be set quite easily as a beneficial task for summative assessment, um, especially when you start looking at getting students to create a web series or a, um, a similar kind of project where they make um, a video over a long period of time as they learn about the subject and as they build their framework of understanding about the subject. Um, I think that situation, it would make it a really, really useful tool as a summative assessment. Um, and also perhaps it could be used as formative assessment in that they need to, that they learn about how to communicate um, by doing this task. Um, but it was, yeah, it, in terms of learning about the science behind a topic, I think it's more of a summative assessment task. They need to already have had a, um, they need to already have a, a, a clear understanding of what they're talking about in order to create a video on it because they need to have comprehended the information, synthesized it and be able to regurgitate it in a different media um, accurately. So I think it would be a lot harder to create a task which is YouTube video based to get students to work on it as a formative assessment um, in terms of learning science and learning about science. Um, it did provide students the opportunity to consolidate their knowledge really well because they had to be so concise about the topic um, and then present it in a different format so um, it extended their understanding um, and then I think for the task that I set, the topics were a little bit too narrow um, and too superficial in terms of the content that they, or the depth that they went into those um, topics in class um, in order, yeah, so I, I found in one or two of the videos that it was mostly just a repetition of what um, they had been learning um, from the textbook or what they had been reading and researching on the internet um, uh, rather than something a little bit more sophisticated their own work um, so I think I think if the topic is a little bit more in depth and a little bit broader then they would have the room to to then uh, generate more of their own work in this situation um, in terms of future directions for this task, I would definitely create the task to be more extensive in terms of the topic and also in terms of the time that they get to work on it. Um, and maybe also give a bit more structure, um, especially if I were to set it as a series. If I was to ask the students to create a series of YouTube videos, I would get the first ones done in a manner that was um, very structured um, and very directed by me so that they then had the opportunity to um, learn about how to 
represent what they want using the medium that they're being given. Um, how to operate iMovie, how, how to create an effective visual aid, how to communicate about science in a way that is um, engaging and um, concise. Um, and then maybe also, yeah, definitely set up the task multiple times throughout the year to develop the student skills and then slowly like hand over the reins to them and get them to really think about um, what they are trying to communicate to the outside world um, on that topic. I think that would be the approach that I would take with this kind of a task in the future. All right. So thank you for listening and I hope you have a great day.